Okay, this is Building Vocabulary Skills, Chapter 11. I'm going to say the words for you, and then you can repeat so you can get the pronunciation down. Defer, endeavor, equate, impose, indignant, inevitable, inevitable, malicious, option, passive, patron. All right, let's go into these words separately. The first one is defer, it's a verb. The children showed great respect for their grandmother and deferred to her every wish. When it comes to fixing cars, I defer to my brother's judgment. He knows much more about auto mechanics than I do. This word means to give in. So you're giving in to another person or to um, somebody's wishes, somebody's judgment, um, somebody else's thoughts on something. You always say defer to and then you have a noun after that. So you're giving into something. Another example I might say when my husband and I have a disagreement or different opinions, I defer to what he wants or vice versa. He defers to what I want. All right, the next one is endeavor. It's also a verb. Becky endeavored to raise money for Christmas presents by selling candy and cookies door to door. Your company would be wise to hire Jesse. He will endeavor to do his best at whatever jobs you give him. This word is just a fancy word for try. All right, and then it always comes with an infinitive after it. I endeavor to do my best. You have to have a verb that's an infinitive to and then verb. She endeavored to pass the class even though she'd had a few low grades so far. He endeavored to get a job right after he came to the United States. All right, equate, it's also a verb. It would be a mistake to equate the two teams just because they both have perfect records. One team has played much stronger opponents. Don't equate all homework assignments with busy work. Homework can increase one's understanding of a subject. This word means consider to be the same. You're always equating two things. You're equating one thing with another thing. And so you have to equate A with B or don't equate A with B to try to make them equal. All right, it's a little bit tricky. The next one is impose. It's also a verb. Our neighbor pounded on our door as we were sitting down to eat. I'm sorry to impose on you during dinner, but I need to borrow a fire extinguisher. Roy is always asking for favors, yet people never seem to notice how much he imposes on them. This word means to selfishly bother. Often we will, if we're going to ask for a favor, we might say, I'm sorry to impose maybe imposed on you, but could you blah, 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 would you mind helping me, blah, blah, blah. So, or you could say he always imposes on me by asking me to babysit, watch his dog, whatever you want to say, give him a ride to school. It's impose on and then a person, okay? Or I'm sorry to impose, period. All right. The next one is indignant. This one is an adjective. My mother becomes indignant when she sees parents treat their children with disrespect. Or the next one, when she was falsely accused of stealing a classmate's gold chain, the student became very indignant. This one means angry. And it's usually angry for a specific reason. Usually you feel like some injustice is being done or you're being treated unfairly. It's not just, I became angry. You can't just say, I became indignant for any specific reason. You have to feel like something unfair was done, such as the parents treating their kids with disrespect or unfairly, one person's being accused of something that they didn't do, so they became indignant. It, they felt like something unfair was being done to them or to somebody else, so they became indignant. Slightly different than angry. All right, the next one is inevitable. It's also an adjective. 
I'm such a chocoholic that if you put a brownie in front of me, it's inevitable that I will eat it. We try so hard to look and stay young, but aging is inevitable. This word is unavoidable, something that you cannot avoid. It will happen no matter how hard you try to not make it happen. It's just going to happen. So death, unfortunately, is inevitable. Tax paying taxes is inevitable. You can't avoid it. Um, like the second sentence says, aging is inevitable. An example would be, it was inevitable that he would fail the class because he never ever did homework and never studied for a test, so he always got an F on every test. Therefore, failing was inevitable. All right, makes sense. If you eat lots of stuff and you never ever exercise and you never watch your weight, it's probably inevitable that you're going to gain weight. All right, the next one is malicious. It's an adjective. Bullies are malicious. They take pleasure in hurting others. Raquel loves malicious gossip. The more spiteful it is, the more she likes it, and the more likely she is to repeat it. Okay, this means mean. Um, so malicious is people being mean on purpose. They're not, it's not an accident. They're trying to be mean. So he could say he was malicious when he said bad things about the other boy in his class. So everybody didn't like the other boy. So purposefully being mean. It's very negative. Okay, the next word is option. It's a noun. When my overweight uncle was told, stop eating so much or you'll have a heart attack within five years, he didn't like either option. Noah thinks a multiple choice test allows him to choose more than one option. The word means a choice. We had the word alternative uh, several chapters ago. It's the same thing, but we use the word option a lot more often. So my option after my options after graduating high school are to go to college, to get a job, or maybe to travel. So option. We use this word all the time. The next word is passive. It's an adjective. Taylor is very passive. He waits for things to happen instead of making them happen. Students learn more when they take part in class discussions instead of simply being passive listeners. Passive means inactive. You're not being active. So it could refer to being physically passive and just sitting on the couch and doing nothing. Or it could be mentally passive where you're just not trying to think about something. You're just taking stuff in and whether you're taking part or not. Or sorry, if you're not taking part, then you're just being passive. You're not giving an opinion. You're not doing anything. You're being passive, all right? And finally, the last word is patron. A punk rock star was a good patron of the beauty shop. She came in at least once a week to change her hair color. Many of the diner's patrons were stagehands who worked at the theater across the street. So it means a customer. So if you go to a restaurant or a store or some type of business, you are a patron in that store. So you can say, I'm a patron at the Mexican restaurant near my house. I'm a patron of blah, blah, blah store that you like the best. All right, that's it for this chapter. Thank you for listening.